Chapters 31 through 33 of Irenaeus Against Heresies, Book 4. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Irenaeus Against Heresies, Book 4, translated by Alexander Roberts and W. H. Rambeau. Chapter 31. We should not hastily impute as crimes to the men of old time those actions which the scripture has not condemned, but should rather seek in them types of things to come, an example of this in the incest committed by Lot. 1. When recounting certain matters of this kind respecting them of old time, the presbyter before mentioned was in the habit of instructing us, and saying, With respect to those misdeeds for which the scriptures themselves blame the patriarchs and the prophets, we ought not to inveigh against them, nor become like Ham, who ridiculed the shame of his father, and so fell under a curse, but we should rather give thanks to God in their behalf, inasmuch as their sins have been forgiven them through the advent of our Lord. For he said that they gave thanks for us, and gloried in our salvation. With respect to those actions, again, on which the scriptures pass no censure, but which are simply set down as having occurred, we ought not to become the accusers of those who committed them, for we are not more exact than God, nor can we be superior to our master, but we should search for a type in them. For not one of those things which have been set down in Scripture without being condemned is without significance. An example is found in the case of Lot, who led forth his daughters from Sodom, and these then conceived by their own father, and who left behind him within the confines of the land his wife, who remains a pillar of salt unto this day. For Lot, not acting under the impulse of his own will, nor at the prompting of carnal concupiscence, nor having any knowledge or thought of anything of the kind, did in fact work out a type of future events. As says the scripture, And that night the elder went in and lay with her father, and Lot knew not when she lay down nor when she arose. And the same thing took place in the case of the younger, and he knew not, it is said, when she slept with him nor when she arose. Since, therefore, Lot knew not what he did, nor was a slave to lust in his actions, the arrangement designed by God was carried out, by which the two daughters, that is, the two churches, who gave birth to children begotten of one and the same father, were pointed out, apart from the influence of the lust of the flesh. For there was no other person, as they supposed, who could impart to them quickening seed, and the means of their giving birth to children, as it is written. And the elder said unto the younger, and there is not a man on the earth to enter in unto us after the manner of all the earth. Come, let us make our father drunk with wine, and let us lie with him, and raise up seed from our father. 2. Thus, after their simplicity and innocence, did these daughters of Lot so speak, imagining that all mankind had perished, even as the Sodomites had done, and that the anger of God had come down upon the whole earth. Wherefore also they are to be held excusable, since they suppose that they only, along with their father, were left for the preservation of the human race, and for this reason it was that they deceived their father. Moreover, by the words they used this fact was pointed out, that there is no other one who can confer upon the elder and younger church the power of giving birth to children besides our father. Now the father of the human race is the word of God, as Moses points out when he says, is not he thy father who hath obtained thee by generation, and formed thee, and created thee? At what time, then, did he pour out upon the human race the life-giving seed, that is, the spirit of the remission of sins, through means of whom we are quickened? Was it not then, when he was eating with men and drinking wine upon the earth? For it is said, The Son of Man came eating and drinking. And when he had lain down, he fell asleep and took repose. As he does himself say in David, I slept, and took repose. And because he used thus to act while he dwelt and lived among us, he says again, And my sleep became sweet unto me. Now this whole matter was indicated through Lot, that the seed of the Father of all, that is, of the Spirit of God, by whom all things were made, was commingled and united with flesh, that is, with his own workmanship, by which commixture and unity the two synagogues, that is, the two churches, produced from their own father living sons to the living God. 3. And while these things were taking place, his wife remained in the territory of Sodom, no longer corruptible flesh, but a pillar of salt which endures forever, 
and by those natural processes which appertain to the human race, indicating that the church also, which is the salt of the earth, has been left behind within the confines of the earth, and subject to human sufferings. And while entire members are often taken away from it, the pillar of salt still endures, thus typifying the foundation of the faith which maketh strong, and sends forward children to their father. Chapter 32 That one God was the author of both testaments is confirmed by the authority of a presbyter who had been taught by the apostles. 1. After this fashion also did a presbyter, a disciple of the apostles, reason with respect to the two testaments, proving that both were truly from one and the same God. For he maintained that there was no other God besides him who made and fashioned us, and that the discourse of those men has no foundation who affirm that this world of ours was made either by angels, or by any other power whatsoever, or by another God. For if a man be once moved away from the Creator of all things, and if he grant that this creation to which we belong was formed by any other, or through any other, than the one God, he must of necessity fall into much inconsistency, and many contradictions of this sort, to which he will be able to furnish no explanations which can be regarded as either probable or true. And, for this reason, those who introduce other doctrines conceal from us the opinion which they themselves hold respecting God, because they are aware of the untenable and absurd nature of their doctrine, and are afraid lest, should they be vanquished, they should have some difficulty in making good their escape. But if any one believes in only one God, who also made all things by the word, as Moses likewise says, God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And as we read in the Gospel, all things were made by him, and without him was nothing made. And the Apostle Paul says in like manner, There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father, who is above all, and through all, and in us all. This man will first of all hold the head from which the whole body is compacted and bound together, and through means of every joint according to the measure of the ministration of each several part, maketh increase of the body to the edification of itself in love. And then shall every word also seem consistent to him, if he for his part diligently read the scriptures in company with those who are presbyters in the church, among whom is the apostolic doctrine, as I have pointed out. 2. For all the apostles taught that there were indeed two testaments among the two peoples, but that it was one and the same God who appointed both for the advantage of those men, for whose sakes the testaments were given, who were to believe in God, I have proved in the third book from the very teaching of the apostles, and that the first testament was not given without reason, or to no purpose, or in an accidental sort of manner, but that it subdued those to whom it was given to the service of God, for their benefit, for God needs no service from men, and exhibited a type of heavenly things, Inasmuch as man was not yet able to see the things of God through means of immediate vision, and foreshadowed the images of those things which now actually exist in the church, in order that our faith might be firmly established, and contained a prophecy of things to come, in order that man might learn that God has foreknowledge of all things. Chapter 33 Whosoever confesses that one God is the author of both testaments, and diligently reads the scriptures in company with the presbyters of the church, is a true spiritual disciple, and he will rightly understand and interpret all that the prophets have declared respecting Christ and the liberty of the New Testament. 1. A spiritual disciple of this sort, truly receiving the Spirit of God, who was from the beginning, in all the dispensations of God, present with mankind, and announced things future, revealed things present, and narrated things past, such a man does indeed judge all men, but is himself judged by no man. For if he judges the Gentiles, who serve the creature more than the Creator, and with a reprobate mind spend all their labor on vanity, and he also judges the Jews, who do not accept the word of liberty, nor are willing to go forth free, although they have a deliverer present with them, but they pretend, at a time unsuitable for such conduct, to serve with observances beyond those required by the law, God who stands in need of nothing, and do not recognize the advent of Christ, which he accomplished for the salvation of men, nor are willing to understand that all prophets announced his two advents, 
the one, indeed, in which he became a man subject to stripes, and knowing what it is to bear infirmity, and sat upon the full of an ass, and was a stone rejected by the builders, and was led as a sheep to the slaughter, and by the stretching forth of his hands destroyed Amalek, while he gathered from the ends of the earth into his father's fold the children who were scattered abroad, and remembered his own dead ones who had formerly fallen asleep, and came down to them that he might deliver them. But the second, in which he will come on the clouds, bringing on the day which burns as a furnace, and smiting the earth with the word of his mouth, and slaying the impious with the breath of his lips, and having a fan in his hands, and cleansing his floor, and gathering the wheat indeed into his barn, but burning the chaff with unquenchable fire. 2. Moreover, he shall also examine the doctrine of Marcion, inquiring how he holds that there are two gods, separated from each other by an infinite distance. Or how can he be good who draws away men that do not belong to him from him who made them, and calls them into his own kingdom? And why is his goodness, which does not save all thus, defective? Also, why does he, indeed, seem to be good as respects men, but most unjust with regard to him who made men, inasmuch as he deprives him of his possessions? Moreover, how could the Lord, with any justice, if he belonged to another father, have acknowledged the bread to be his body, while he took it from that creation to which we belong, and affirmed the mixed cup to be his blood? And why did he acknowledge himself to be the son of man, if he had not gone through that birth which belongs to a human being? How, too, could he forgive us those sins for which we are answerable to our Maker and God? And how, again, supposing that he was not flesh, but was a man merely in appearance, could he have been crucified, and could blood and water have issued from his pierced side? What body, moreover, was it that those who buried him consigned to the tomb? And what was that which rose again from the dead? 3. This spiritual man shall also judge all the followers of Valentinus, because they do indeed confess with the tongue one God the Father, and that all things derive their existence from him, but do at the same time maintain that he who formed all things is the fruit of an apostasy or defect. He shall judge them too, because they do in like manner confess with the tongue one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, but assign in their system of doctrine a production of his own to the only begotten, one of his own also to the Word, another to Christ, and yet another to the Saviour, so that according to them, all these beings are indeed said, in Scripture to be, as it were, one, while they maintain, notwithstanding, that each one of them should be understood to exist separately from the rest, and to have had his own special origin, according to his peculiar conjunction. It appears, then, that their tongues alone, forsooth, have conceded the unity of God, while their real opinion and their understanding, by their habit of investigating profundities, have fallen away from this doctrine of unity and taken up the notion of manifold deities. This, I say, must appear when they shall be examined by Christ as to the points of doctrine which they have invented. Him, too, they affirm to have been born at a later period than the Pleroma of the Aeons, and that his production took place after the occurrence of a degeneracy or apostasy, and they maintain that, on account of the passion which was experienced by Sophia, they themselves were brought to the birth, but their own special prophet Homer, listening to whom they have invented such doctrines, shall himself reprove them, when he expresses himself as follows. Hateful to me that man is Hades' gates, who one thing thinks, while he another states. This spiritual man shall also judge the vain speeches of the perverse Gnostics, by showing that they are the disciples of Simon Magus. 4. He will judge also the Ebionites. For how can they be saved unless it was God who wrought out their salvation upon earth? Or how shall man pass into God unless God has first passed into man? And how shall he, man, escape from the generation subject to death, if not by means of a new generation, given in a wonderful and unexpected manner, but as a sign of salvation by God? I mean that regeneration which flows from the virgin through faith. Or how shall they receive adoption from God if they remain in this kind of generation, which is naturally possessed by man in this world? And how could he, Christ, have been greater than Solomon, or greater than Jonah, or have been the Lord of David, who was of the same substance as they were? How, too, could he have subdued him who was stronger than men, 
who had not only overcome man, but also retained him under his power, and conquered him who had conquered, while he set free mankind who had been conquered, unless he had been greater than man who had thus been vanquished. But who else is superior to, and more eminent than, that man who was formed after the likeness of God, except the Son of God, after whose image man was created? And for this reason he did in these last days exhibit the similitude. For the Son of God was made man, assuming the ancient production of his hands into his own nature, as I have shown in the immediately preceding book. 5. He shall also judge those who describe Christ as having become man only in human opinion. For how can they imagine that they do themselves carry on a real discussion when their master was a mere imaginary being? Or how can they receive anything steadfast from him if he was a merely imagined being and not a verity? And how can these men really be partakers of salvation, if he in whom they profess to believe manifested himself as a merely imaginary being? Everything, therefore, connected with these men is unreal, and nothing possessed of the character of truth. And in these circumstances, it may be made a question whether, since perchance they themselves in like manner are not men, but mere dumb animals, they do not present, in most cases, simply a shadow of humanity. 6. He shall also judge false prophets, who, without having received the gift of prophecy from God, and not possessed of the fear of God, but either for the sake of vainglory, or with a view to some personal advantage, or acting in some other way under the influence of a wicked spirit, pretend to utter prophecies, while at the same time they lie against God. 7. He shall also judge those who give rise to schisms, who are destitute of the love of God, and who look to their own special advantage rather than to the unity of the church, and who for trifling reasons, or any kind of reason which occurs to them, cut in pieces and divide the great and glorious body of Christ, and so far as in them lies, positively destroy it. Men who prate of peace while they give rise to war, and do in truth strain out a gnat but swallow a camel. For no reformation of so great importance can be effected by them, as will compensate for the mischief arising from their schism. He shall also judge all those who are beyond the pale of the truth, that is, who are outside the church. But he himself shall be judged by no one. For to him all things are consistent. He has a full faith in one God Almighty, of whom are all things, and in the Son of God, Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom are all things, and in the dispensations connected with him, by means of which the Son of God became man, and a firm belief in the Spirit of God who furnishes us with a knowledge of the truth, and has set forth the dispensations of the Father and the Son, in virtue of which he dwells with every generation of men, according to the will of the Father. 8. True knowledge is that which consists in the doctrine of the apostles, and the ancient constitution of the church throughout all the world, and the distinctive manifestation of the body of Christ according to the successions of the bishops, by which they have handed down that church which exists in every place and has come even unto us, being guarded and preserved, without any forging of scriptures, by a very complete system of doctrine, and neither receiving addition nor suffering curtailment in the truths which she believes, and it consists in reading the word of God, without falsification, and a lawful and diligent exposition in harmony with the scriptures, both without danger and without blasphemy, and above all it consists in the preeminent gift of love, which is more precious than knowledge, more glorious than prophecy, and which excels all the other gifts of God. 9. Wherefore the church does in every place, because of that love which she cherishes towards God, send forward throughout all time a multitude of martyrs to the Father, while all others not only have nothing of this kind to point to among themselves, but even maintain that such witness-bearing is not at all necessary, for that their system of doctrines is the true witness for Christ, with the exception, perhaps, that one or two among them, during the whole time which has elapsed since the Lord appeared on earth, have occasionally, along with our martyrs, borne the reproach of the name as if he too, the heretic, had obtained mercy, and have been led forth with them to death, being, as it were, a sort of retinue granted unto them. For the church alone sustains with purity the reproach of those who suffer persecution for righteousness' sake, and endure all sorts of punishments, and are put to death because of the love which they bear to God. 
and their confession of his son, often weakened indeed, yet immediately increasing her members, and becoming whole again, after the same manner as her type, Lot's wife, who became a pillar of salt. Thus, too, she passes through an experience similar to that of the ancient prophets, as the Lord declares, For so persecuted they the prophets who were before you, inasmuch as she does indeed, in a new fashion, suffer persecution from those who do not receive the word of God, while the selfsame spirit rests upon her as upon these ancient prophets. 10. And indeed the prophets, along with other things which they predicted, also foretold this, that all those on whom the Spirit of God should rest, and who would obey the word of the Father, and serve him according to their ability, should suffer persecution, and be stoned and slain. For the prophets prefigured in themselves all these things, because of their love to God, and on account of his word. For since they themselves were members of Christ, each one of them in his place as a member did, in accordance with this, set forth the prophecy assigned him. All of them, although many, prefiguring only one, and proclaiming the things which pertain to one. For just as the working of the whole body is exhibited through means of our members, while the figure of a complete man is not displayed by one member, but through means of all taken together, so also did all the prophets prefigure the one Christ, while every one of them, in his special place as a member, did, in accordance with this, fill up the established dispensation, and shadowed forth beforehand that particular working of Christ which was connected with that member. 11. For some of them, beholding him in glory, saw his glorious life, conversationem, at the Father's right hand. Others beheld him coming on the clouds as the Son of Man. And those who declared regarding him, they shall look on him whom they have pierced, indicated his second advent, concerning which he himself says, Thinkest thou that when the Son of Man cometh, he shall find faith on the earth? Paul also refers to this event when he says, If, however, it is a righteous thing with God to recompense tribulation to them that trouble you, and to you that are troubled rest with us, at the revelation of the Lord Jesus from heaven, with his mighty angels, and in a flame of fire. Others again, speaking of him as a judge, and referring, as if it were a burning furnace, to the day of the Lord, who gathers the wheat into his barn, but will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire, were accustomed to threaten those who were unbelieving, concerning whom also the Lord himself declares, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, which my Father has prepared for the devil and his angels. And the Apostle in like manner says of them, Who shall be punished with everlasting death from the face of the Lord, and from the glory of his power, when he shall come to be glorified in his saints, and to be admired in those who believe in him? There are also some of them who declare, Thou art fairer than the children of men, and God, thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And, gird thy sword upon thy thigh, O most mighty, with thy beauty and thy fairness, and go forward and proceed prosperously, and rule thou because of truth and meekness and righteousness. And whatever other things of a like nature are spoken regarding him, these indicated that beauty and splendor which exist in his kingdom, along with a transcendent and preeminent exaltation belonging to all who are under his sway that those who hear might desire to be found there, doing such things as are pleasing to God. Again, there are those who say, He is a man, and who shall know him? And, I came unto the prophetess, and she bare a son, and his name is called Wonderful Counselor, the Mighty God. And those of them who proclaimed him as Emmanuel, born of the Virgin, exhibited the union of the Word of God with his own workmanship, declaring that the word should become flesh, and the Son of God the Son of Man, the pure one opening purely, that pure womb which regenerates men into God, and which he himself made pure. And having become this which we also are, he nevertheless is the mighty God, and possesses a generation which cannot be declared. And there are also some of them who say, The Lord hath spoken in Zion, and uttered his voice from Jerusalem. And, In Judah is God known, these indicated his advent which took place in Judea. Those, again, who declare that God comes from the south and from a mountain thick with foliage, announced his advent at Bethlehem, as I have pointed out in the preceding book. From that place also, he who rules and who feeds the people of his father has come. Those, again, who declare that at his coming the lame man shall leap as an heart, 
and the tongue of the dumb shall speak plainly, and the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall hear, and that the hands which hang down, and the feeble knees shall be strengthened, and that the dead which are in the grave shall arise, and that he himself shall take upon him our weaknesses, and bear our sorrows. All of these proclaimed those works of healing which were accomplished by him. 12. Some of them, moreover, when they predicted that as a weak and inglorious man, and as one who knew what it was to bear infirmity, and sitting upon the full of an ass, he should come to Jerusalem, and that he should give his back to stripes, and his cheeks to palms which struck him, and that he should be led as a sheep to the slaughter, and that he should have vinegar and gall given him to drink, and that he should be forsaken by his friends and those nearest to him, and that he should stretch forth his hands the whole day long, and that he should be mocked and maligned by those who looked upon him, and that his garments should be parted, and lots cast upon his raiment, and that he should be brought down to the dust of death, with all the other things of a like nature, prophesied his coming in the character of a man as he entered Jerusalem, in which by his passion and crucifixion he endured all the things which have been mentioned. Others, again, when they said, The Holy Lord remembered his own dead ones who slept in the dust, and came down to them to raise them up, that he might save them, furnished us with the reason on account of which he suffered all these things. Those, moreover, who said, In that day, saith the Lord, the sun shall go down at noon, and there shall be darkness over the earth in the clear day, and I will turn your feast days into mourning, and all your songs into lamentation. Plainly announced that obscuration of the sun which at the time of his crucifixion took place from the sixth hour onwards, and that after this event, those days which were their festivals according to the law, and their songs, should be changed into grief and lamentation when they were handed over to the Gentiles. Jeremiah, too, makes this point still clearer, when he thus speaks concerning Jerusalem. She that hath borne seven languisheth. Her soul hath become weary. Her son hath gone down while it was yet noon. She hath been confounded and suffered reproach. The remainder of them will I give to the sword in the sight of their enemies. 13. Those of them, again, who spoke of his having slumbered and taken sleep, and of his having risen again because the Lord sustained him, and who enjoined the principalities of heaven to set open the everlasting doors, that the King of glory might go in, proclaim beforehand his resurrection from the dead through the Father's power, and his reception into heaven. And when they expressed themselves thus, his going forth is from the height of heaven, and his returning even to the highest heaven, and there is no one who can hide himself from his heat. They announce that very truth of his being taken up again to the place from which he came down, and that there is no one who can escape his righteous judgment. And those who said, The Lord hath reigned, let the people be enraged, even he who sitteth upon the cherubim, let the earth be moved, were thus predicting partly that wrath from all nations, which after his ascension came upon those who believed in him, with the movement of the whole earth against the church, and partly the fact that, when he comes from heaven with his mighty angels, the whole earth shall be shaken, as he himself declares, there shall be a great earthquake, such as has not been from the beginning. And again, when one says, Whosoever is judged, let him stand opposite, and whosoever is justified, let him draw near to the servant of God. And, Woe unto you, for ye shall all wax old as doth a garment, and the moth shall eat you up. And, all flesh shall be humbled, and the Lord alone shall be exalted in the highest. It is thus indicated that, after his passion and ascension, God shall cast down under his feet all who were opposed to him, and he shall be exalted above all, and there shall be no one who can be justified or compared to him. 14. And those of them who declare that God would make a new covenant with men, not such as that which he made with the fathers at Mount Horeb, and would give to men a new heart, and a new spirit, and again, And remember ye not the things of old, behold, I make new things which shall not arise, and ye shall know it, and I will make a way in the desert, and rivers in a dry land, to give drink to my chosen people, my people whom I have acquired, that they may show forth my praise. Plainly announced that liberty which distinguishes the new covenant, and the new wine which was put into new bottles, that is, the faith which is in Christ by which he has proclaimed the way of righteousness sprung up in the desert, and the streams of the Holy Spirit in dry land, 
to give water to the elect people of God, whom he has acquired, that they might show forth his praise, but not that they might blaspheme him who made these things, that is, God. 15. And all those other points which I have shown the prophets to have uttered by means of so long a series of scriptures, he who is truly spiritual will interpret by pointing out, in regard to every one of the things which have been spoken, to what special point in the dispensation of the Lord is referred, and by thus exhibiting the entire system of the work of the Son of God, knowing always the same God, and always acknowledging the same word of God, although he has but now been manifested to us, acknowledging also at all times the same Spirit of God, although he has been poured out upon us after a new fashion in these last times, knowing that he descends even from the creation of the world to its end upon the human race simply as such, from whom those who believe God and follow his word receive that salvation which flows from him. Those, on the other hand, who depart from him and despise his precepts, and by their deeds bring dishonor on him who made them, and by their opinions blaspheme him who nourishes them, heap up against themselves most righteous judgment. He therefore, i.e. the spiritual man, sifts and tries them all, but he himself is tried by no man. He neither blasphemes his father, nor sets aside his dispensations, nor inveighs against the fathers, nor dishonors the prophets, by maintaining that they were sent from another god than he worships, or again, that their prophecies were derived from different sources. End of Book 4 Chapters 31-33 through 33. Read by J. R. O'Mahon